What are we doing right as a culture to where our children's children will know our names? Are we doing things right as a culture to change the narrative of our finances of our children? I can only answer that as an individual and then see what we and my wife also tried to do and spread, right? Um, I can't I can't save the world. Yeah. But I can save the people that watch me. I can save the people that touch me. I can save the people that work for me. I do my best, right? You know, so, um, you know, I, I just look at it as um, you have to be that beacon, right? You got to be that shining light to change everything around you. You know, yeah. be that leading example. But I don't think that's anything new under the sun, what you're saying. No, it's not I, new. I, I, I have plenty of examples in my life of people who stuck their foot in the door so that I could pass through. That's not always, and, that's not always out, out the way we do things, though. I have a dream. You know, I, I, I'm I think, just I no. think there's a bigger majority of us that are doing that for one another than, than we are willing to shout from the mountaintops about, yeah. you know, who did something for me. And I think there are plenty of people who worked for that on our behalf to make a way for me. So let, let me ask you guys a question. And like you asked, like, if we're doing the right thing uh, as a culture, do you guys think, like, as, the, as the black community, we always do too much kind of self-promotion and buying flashy things and, and doing all the stuff that negatively stereotype for us. But, I mean, you got Jordans on uh, right now. You look at the Jewish legacy. They're another historically oppressed people, but the, their type of lineage, like, hey, we're going to save a lot of money and we're going we're gonna to pass it on to our generation. Mm -hmm. So do you think we are progressing in the right way? I think what our culture is doing right is that we've always been able to take our pain and channel it into expression. Our, our culture is at the top of every industry. Our culture sure. is manufactured, marketed, and sold at the top of every industry. We are at the top of music. Black culture is pop culture. We, we've, always been able, we've always been able to take our pain and channel it into art, into expression, and to even, you could give black people the worst part of anything and they'll find a way to make it Amazing. I think it goes back to her point about ownership. We don't own the we don't own the culture that we create. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the issue. Yeah. But what we are doing right is that we always have the most creative, most artistic, uh, uh, most true expression of whatever industry we're in. And the issue is that we don't own it. We're not the ones signing the checks. Mm -hmm. So that goes back into your point where because we're not the ones signing the checks, it goes to her point where we're trying to look like the one who's signing the checks even yeah. though we're not. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to have this, the symbols of success without actually being successful. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Jewish community, exactly. community has been able that's to right. do. They own things, so they don't have time to look like they own it because they actually own it. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, but I do want to give us credit for, to answer your question, what are we doing right? We are the needle of culture. Oh, yeah. Period. We're the founders. We're the, like, founders, and, and we're the on Earth. On Earth. And that's something I feel like we're doing right. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's something I feel like we're I doing right. I think you both brought up a point, though, that further speaks to our internal oppression. Because I only hear other Black people say things about us wearing Jordans and, yeah. you know, we're driving mm -hmm. this. You don't say that to your neighbor. You don't know how much he paid for, mm -hmm. you know, whatever shoes he wears. I actually right? got these for free. <laughs> These were a gift. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's something that's said all the time. It's something yeah. that's said all the time, you know, and even myself, I, I've caught myself becoming like that's an internal thing because your counterpart that does not look like you might put on a pair of $250 shoes and not think anything about it. You but see isn't it crazy though? Like, that's a great point, because isn't it crazy? Like, you look at uh, a black person that dresses really well, or they 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 come out of, like, a Mercedes or something. My mind automatically goes to, like, dang, like, how do you get that? But why? Mm -hmm. To your point. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like... I feel like you know why. I feel like you know why. It's a part of the internal oppression. I feel like you know why. But then if a white person walks out... It's yeah. institutionalized it's the, the thing internal oppression. And always say what they expect you to be. And it's sad. You know, I was I was talking to the young brothers, you know, why do you mean mug each other when you're walking towards each other coming down the block? 
you're in the mall. Why don't you say, hey, peace, brother, how you doing? Yeah. Why is it always, hey, how you doing? That's how we, a relationship starts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how we break down that mechanism of hatred exactly. amongst us. Yeah. Why are these brothers killing each other? They are trained to hate each other. First again, they're trained to hate. I think that no. depends on where you are. It, it I, depends I've been, where you I've are. been in several white spaces where if I walk in and there's another black person anywhere within I view, you almost like, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know so I, I don't again, see the mean mugging thing. Like, if I'm in I'm a, a white space, man. I, even, I with, even among way. black men, I yeah. see black men dap each other up in a mall because they pass each other and they see they're the only ones oh, yeah. around. And they will That's speak true. to each other. They will embrace each other. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that. I'm sorry, but oh, man, really? I appreciate really? you. I haven't seen that. No, I no, I'm, think, I'm a grown man that, now. I'm talking, no, about, I'm, talking, I'm talking about years later. I'm a grown man. I don't have those issues now. You. Every yeah. brother that comes towards me is, how you doing, brother? How yeah. you doing, young man? Yeah. I'm talking about the young kids, yeah. right? Yeah. That are walking around each other and not understanding who the other person is. I really feel like black people root for each other. I yeah. really yeah. do. I believe that, I too. I mean, man, you look on TV and you watching Bowling or something on ESPN, like, I'm sorry, I'm going for the one black dude that's out there. <laughs> Everybody roots for the black I'm, 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 I'm voting. I want him. Like, I want him to win and I want him to be exactly. successful in anything that he does. Exactly. Yeah. But would you, but, but, and I, I'm just devil's advocate because I'm with you. Would you support the black person who's starting the first black bowling league? Yeah. Because yeah. that's the difference. I was trying to learn how like, to Like, that's the difference, is that all of these industries that we're supporting, we don't we don't own the other. Exactly. Like, all, we, we push the needle in billion-dollar industries and don't... You talk about head coaches. Mm -hmm. There's one black NBA owner. We we run the NBA. Yeah. But there's one owner. Mm -hmm. Like, if a black league started today, would you watch it? That's the real question. Mm -hmm. And do we support our black schools? We support Nice Cube. Come on. Y'all um, was calling out Jordans and... Y'all know I'm a money guy. So studies are showing that by 2054, the average African-American will have zero to negative wealth when the average Caucasian will have $150,000 or more. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So if studies are showing that we will have zero to negative wealth, but we look like wealth, where are we messing up at? What, what is the problem? Ownership. Ownership of your own and ownership and helping people have ownership. There's got to be more teachers out there. There's got to be more teachers and more examples, yeah, right, yeah. of ownership and what it looks yeah. like, to what it point. truly looks like, right? Because like you said, you can have a company, it could be a bunch of black people running around the stage and running around yeah. the courts, but if you don't own nothing, but everybody else got a Benz on the court, exactly. right? The owner might have nothing but a beat-up wa wagon, but he's a billionaire. But it's teaching, right? You have to be that teaching, that example. But I guess my question is, Ownership doesn't stop you from saving what your income is. We're not even saving what we're making. Right. Mm -hmm. So studies show that the average Caucasian drives a Ford F-150. Mm. Then the average African-American who makes in between fifty and $60,000 drives a Mercedes. So I, I guess my question is for us, while yes, we don't own a lot, with the income that we do have, why is it that in the next 20 years, we will not have wealth? I think, I mean, black people, I, it just goes back to the fact that black people rather look like they have money than actually have money. I and if you want to, I don't want to look like that. Now, 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 listen, now, now, listen, I say that to say this. <laughs> now, look, listen, I say that to say this. Look right, at Jay, look at Jay Z. Around. Let's look at Jay Z. Turn my chair around on this one, brother. Let's, let, let's look at Jay Z yeah, real quick. This, and, and I want to bring, and I was going to bring it up with I'm an listening. example. I'm listening. Come on, brother. Jay Z, when he first got into the rap game, and there, and you can look at yourself on the internet. Man was worth I, a thing. Like, I was there, so I'm. I'm it was worth about hundred thousand dollars. I just, I just I mean, shared that. I shared had that two the, days the ago. Chain, yeah. The chain, the chain. I don't know how much money and jewelry he had on him. Jay Z worth a bill was wearing just a black t-shirt, a black t-shirt, and all that. like that. So that's the point well, I'm trying to make. That's deceptive. That's deceptive. That's deceptive. He's not gonna wear blue. I understand that. Deceptive. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. The Hugo he had on was 500k. But 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 it's but I'm just saying. I guarantee you. But I'm just saying like the flashiness, like the the fact that we feel like we gotta you know wear all the chains, the grills, all this stuff to show that you have money and have wealth. When a brother used to get a dime, he'll go out and get a flashy suit and take his old lady out to the club. I mean, that's just. What it was, yeah. You know, if you don't make a lot of money, if you don't have a lot, 
Gotta when you get that them. little check, you're going to go out there and try to do what you can do exactly. and stretch it and try to have a good time and show people, hey, I got a job. I'm, I'm, this yeah. is what I'm doing. Okay, so why do but we have to feel like we have to show people that? Because to, his point, to his point, he was asking about saving, right? It's, like, a, it's a mentality, it's a mentality. shoot. I, yeah. I agree. The thing that's coming to my head goes down to fake it till you make it. Mm. Yeah. Where did that even come from? No idea. And if you could trace where fake it till you make it even came from and realize the mentality that that even is, that maybe you wouldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what it all boils down to. We have been brainwashed into believing that we have to look a certain part to be allowed to come into the conversation and be inside of the room. And be when, accepted. Yeah. But if, if yeah, everything that right. we've said is it's true, true. Yeah. If, 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 if everything, all things are being equal, that are true, then we have a right to be in the room anyway. Regardless, exactly. And, but, and I think that's... So but that's then, us saying that about us. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to dress conservative, conservatively at work. You know, I have to wear business suits. I have to have my nails a certain way, my hair a certain way. On the weekend, I wear a baseball cap turned backwards. <laughs> Um, sweatsuits, sweat Jordans. Suits, Jordans. I, you know, and, and I'm perceived very differently. Oh, it's yeah. night and day. Yeah. I can go to Nordstrom's on the weekend just killing time, and if I'm dressed in my weekend attire, I'm perceived a certain way. Mm -hmm. I can go to Nordstrom's after work dressed like I'm dressed now after work. Mm -hmm. I'm perceived a completely different way. I'm the same 100%. person. It doesn't... So I get that having to do what you have to do. That's almost a work uniform. You got to do that. You that's work it. at Chick-fil-A, you got to wear a red polo. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's, that's a work uniform. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be that way. And that's why I said earlier that victimization can come in many different forms. And, and to his point, we kind of learn to deal with it. We mm -hmm. learn to deal with it. You know, I've been followed around the store and I stopped and turned around. And I said, I'm not going to put anything in here in my Tory Burch bag. Mm. And I look at her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because it's like, I'm not going to steal anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you're perceiving me on an outward appearance just because I'm not dressed a certain way, and it's unfair. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's really unfair. Yeah. Studies are showing that nearly 50% of us cannot afford to pay cash for a $400 emergency. Mm -hmm. But yet, I guarantee the same person owns two pair of Jordans that, are, that is worth... Five hundred dollars. Not all the time. Is it? Is it also like? Does it also make a difference that? I mean, we get paid. Black people in general, we get paid about twenty-five percent less for the same position as a as a white male as a wild counterpart. Valid that point. has to be like it's hard to bridge that gap. Yeah, but he just finished saying we were the needle of the culture, so we set that. We set the culture. Yeah, we like, like we buy Jordans, but the white guy owns Michael Jordan. Like he owns the Jordan brand, so how can we catch up to that? Well, I was saying we get 20, we would get paid twenty five percent less for doing the exact same for doing the exact same job. But if our spending habits are the way that they are, what does it matter what you getting paid? Exactly. That's that was the point. point. Like, That's the point. point. It really you're doesn't we're matter. Like, the money you, we're making being, don't matter. Being fiscally financially responsible and understanding what that actually means is huge, right? If you're not taught it, don't understand it, then go to school for it, you'll never know it. So to your point and you're going to be in a negative and not have money in comparison in 2054, being fiscally irresponsible, right? Not knowing how to invest properly, not knowing what to do with that dollar that you got. You know, I, I used to, well, I was kind of raised when I was the youngest youngster, and, and I started in the cooking industry. I was raised by an Italian family, and the gentleman always told me, you know, the father always told me, you take that dollar, you spit on it. You put it in the bank and don't look at it until you get enough to invest it, reinvest it. Don't put it in your pocket. If you walk around in your pocket, you're going to spend it. Mm -hmm. That was something he always told me as a youngster, right? And then come from my father. It came from the gentleman I worked for wow. that I lived with. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I'm not saying it was a black thing. I'm not saying it was a white thing or anything. But it was something I just learned from him. And, you know, I, that I think that, you know, it starts at home. You know, the reason why it starts at home, we have to know about what to do with that dollar.
If you don't know what to do with the dollar, dollars just gonna leave your pocket. And I think those are just a bunch of personal decisions that you have to make as a person yeah. yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to decide. That's not black yeah. or white. Yeah. That's yeah. not it's black just, or white. I think it's, I think it's a, a decision, even if you are black, yeah. even if you are oppressed, even if you have been victimized, I think you still have to make a decision. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we talk about this often. We drive what we drive by choice. We could go get nicer, newer cars, but we, we've made a mature decision to not feel intimidated when you meet your friends for lunch and everybody's jumping out of a new car and yours is 15 years old. You don't, we, we made a choice mm-hmm. not to be affected by that. We made a choice to think, okay, if we, if we decide to get married, if we don't have this amount of money in the bank, why would we spend that to throw a celebration? Yeah. We're not going to, you know, you have to have those conversations as yeah. individuals. Mm-hmm. And then you, you make those decisions as families. And, you know, I, I heard someone say not too long ago, you're born looking like your dad, you die looking like your decisions. So it's <laughs> you, it, how, how you leave That's this good. earth is going to be just how you made decisions. I'm about to yeah. use that one. Yeah, I'm going to use that as well. I'm going to use that as well. That's good. That's real good. That was good. <laughs> so, so as a... That's good. That's good. How do we help our culture make better decisions with the income that they do have? Because you made a valid point. We will make less. That's just proven across the table. We cannot control that as of right now. But with the income that we have, I'm a a saved man. So flipping over to the spiritual side, how do we become good stewards of the resources that God has given us? We live on less than we make. We lead by example. We open the door for transparency to allow other people to see where we actually are instead of telling them what we want them to believe or what we fantasize to be the truth. We actually show them and live out for them by example what it is that they are supposed to do. When my daughter turned 16 years old, I began to prepare her to be a homeowner by the time she was 21. I began to do things that I knew would position her to do that. So I led her by example. I didn't just talk about what I wanted to be. I was about what I wanted her to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that's what we do. We're so busy not wanting to tell our children, oh, mom was a hoe mm. back in the day, but she learned better than that. Mm-hmm. You know, they can see. Right. They're not blind. You know, the, the bottom line is, is that we, we live by example, in front of our children, whatever, no matter what we say, they see what we do. And I think that's the way we change it. Okay, I will add something here. Um, I, well, when you were talking about that, with the analogy of like when you're on an airplane and the oxygen mask analogy, mm-hmm. how you have to put the mask on yourself first to be, to be able to even help the person mm-hmm. put on their mask. Mm-hmm. To me, I'm always big about like, be the very thing that you want to attract and then you can duplicate yourself. Because if you're trying to duplicate something or trying to pour into somebody else and you're not even taking care of yourself, that's kind of hard to do that. Mm-hmm. And then the quote that I love is, know what you know and know who don't, do, wait, know what you know and, wait, how's he say? Know what you know and know someone who doesn't know that you know what you know and that's all you need to know. So whenever I don't know something, mm-hmm. I don't care how dumb I look, I ask a whole lot of questions. And that's honestly how I've learned a lot of different things. Like, that's why I have to talk in quiet because... This is a different, like, so growing up Caribbean, like, we're always, like, we, we've always been taught to just go after whatever it is, and nothing can stop you. And that's kind of what I've experienced, but that's also because of how my parents, like, positioned us. Like, being in South Florida, we grew up in this place, place called Davie. It was a white community. Like, that we, they kind of paved the way for us so we didn't have to experience a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. So I always want to make sure that I understand and I can empathize with how my friends grew up and how other people's different experiences because I can't necessarily speak on it the same way. Mm. You know, so it's kind of hard. That's why I'm just like, I'm kind of nervous because I don't know what I'm going to say in some in some situations. Because um, the nearest thing I got to, I guess, racism or like situation like that was my brother when he was working at um, Publix and the, he was pushing the cart and the young lady was just like, oh, mommy, his hands are dirty. And that's the closest we kind of got to it. Mm. You know, so... It's very interesting hearing the different perspectives that are shared. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of going off topic, but that's kind of what's been going on in my mind. Like, this is this is some real stuff. Like, this is... I think... Yeah. I think if you're going to flip it to a spiritual perspective, you're talking about being a good steward. Mm-hmm. If you only rely on this world system, then that'll be the results that you get. That's cool. um, I believe that 
if we're going to on a sp spiritual lane, if y'all will go with me real quick, I believe that God will give each individual wisdom on how to handle their finances. Uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, I'm the Lord your God that teaches you to profit. Like we need to be taught how to profit. And if your only teaching is based on this world system or your household, we're saying what the results are that God gave Joseph a vision on how to multiply his resources in years of famine. That saving is not a world system. Mm -hmm. God told Joseph, yo, in these years of famine, take a portion of that to the side, and while everybody else starving, y'all gonna be good. You flip that to the New Testament, Jesus himself gave a parable where he said he gave one man one talent, another man five, and another one ten, mm -hmm. which shows me that no matter what situation you're in, wisdom can be applied. Story. If you have less, the middle or upper class, the same wisdom can be applied. And you might not ever have as much as the man with 10 talents, but at the same time, you can still maximize your potential in whatever situation you're in. And that parable, the person who had the least, Bible said was lazy and just hit it and didn't trade, didn't invest, didn't multiply his resources. And, and Jesus caught that man lazy. So I think if you're, if you're dependent on this world system, if you're dependent on the government, if you're dependent on your black family's household to somehow miraculously understand financial literacy and teach it to you, then that's going to be the fruit that you, uh, you know, that's going to be the tree that you eat off. But mm -hmm. I think God will give each individual wisdom. I think there are practical things in the Bible uh, that can unlock spiritual resources. I think if you tithe, I think if you give to good causes, if you give to the needy, these are things, these are practical things that we think are so spiritual, but they're really simple to do. They're really, really simple things. And I think that people who do these things are generally more successful. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a key part of it that we haven't yet unlocked. And we're talking a lot about the world system and the government and racism. But I truly believe that God can supersede any system that we're currently living in. Mm -hmm. um, and that as a culture, man, I don't really want to go all the way here, but as a culture, I think... We're taught in black churches to just pray and wait and believe for God to make something happen. But according to the parable what that Jesus faith, faith without works is what? But according to the exactly. parable that yeah. Jesus gave, that man who did that was lazy and slothful. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what he called him. Mm -hmm. So I think I think even in our black churches, there's a, 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 a loser's mentality at times. As a culture, even in our churches, we're taught to be the borrower and not the lender. And That's it's right. the complete opposite of what was originally intended. That's right. I was uh, speaking <clears throat> at a HBCU. I won't say the name of the college. Kids came up to me and said, I cannot be financially successful compared to my white friends. Do we feel, as a culture, that African Americans, we can never be as successful financially as a Caucasian individual? That's a horrible way to think. Yeah. I don't think anyone on this panel thinks that. I think I think it's case by case.